Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Man, I'm feeling good today. So, yeah. I just completely jumped right into that one now, didn't I? Um, yeah. Once again, it is Saturday. Um, let's see. Saturday, 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 not me, Saturday, not me, that's all right. Woo! Yeah, I'm just feeling good today, man. I don't know why. I mean, I, I just don't know why I feel good today. It feels so really excellent, as Harry Potter said in the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which... Actually, from what I hear, the Half-Blood Prince movie is better than the book, because the book is exposition for the final book. But that's just me. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, you know, that really does remind me. Um, I do like Harry Potter. I do. But... Huh. You know what? Maybe I should just talk about what my th overall thoughts on the Harry Potter franchise are. I mean, you guys have probably know you. I know I've probably said this at least at some point, but I, for the life of me, cannot stand reading. I think of any of the pastimes that anyone can ever do, it is the most boring tedious and ridiculous sort of well not ridiculous but just I guess it's it's the plain Jane of passing the time if that makes sense I mean really all I do is just sit there and read words which honestly anybody can do I mean I do it all the time but not to the extent where I would actually get into the invested in the story. The only reason why I know such things like what happens in some of Shakespeare's tragedies or or the fact that I had to read stuff like The Great Gatsby or To Kill a Mockingbird is because I had to read them for school. That's just that's just how it is. So you give me a giant three hundred page book, even if it's involving really cool wizards and magic and wands, I'm really not going to be that interested. Thankfully, we live in a day and age where we can actually use, to use where, no, we can actually use television and movies to help us visualize everything that's going on. And yes, I'm going to be with you. Of course, I know for a fact that the movies are not faithful to the books. I knew that right away. Especially when, even when I saw the first movie, I thought to myself, I don't think that's everything that happened in the book. I mean, I did read like half of the first book. I mean, that's how into reading I am, ladies and gentlemen. I only got maybe halfway to three quarters of the way through the first book. And, again, I just found it really kind of, you know, boring. I mean, the reading aspect. I mean, it was nice to know some of Harry's background. You know, that, you know, his parents died and he lives with his evil, cruel aunt and uncle and spoiled brat of a cousin. But, you know, that's... I mean, yeah, that's, that's nice. And Although, looking back on the whole Harry Potter thing, I did... Because, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I did used to wear glasses when I was a kid. And so... One story that actually did touch me is J.K. Rowling, the original writer of the Harry... the author of the Harry Potter books... She actually met this little boy on a train, I believe. It was a bus or a train or some form of transportation where she ran into this child. And this child just happened to be sad because, you know, he had to wear glasses and he felt embarrassed by that, which is understandable. Lots of people are first embarrassed when they have to wear glasses. Lots of people are embarrassed when they have to wear braces. Lots of people are embarrassed when, you know, they have acne. I mean, we've all had to go through stuff like that at some point. It's not really... 
you know, it kind of goes with uh, a certain value of mine called self-compassion. But that's something for another day. All you really need to know is that, you know, you have to be mindful of the situation that you're in. That it stinks. But also remembering that everyone goes through problems themselves. And you just ask yourself, can I forgive myself? But again, I'll get into more of that a little bit later. Anyway, at another time, I mean. So, back to Harry Potter. You know, uh, J.K. Rowling said, well, I'm writing a book. He said this to the little kid. And this character in my book is going to wear glasses, too. So that's how Harry Potter got his glasses, apparently. Who knew? So anyway, back to the uh, movies of the Harry Potter franchise. Um, Sorcerer's Stone came out. I'm like, oh, that was kind of neat. I kind of like that. I didn't think they would ever really get to the um, other books, but they did. So... You know, uh, Chamber of Secrets comes out. The escalation was greater in that one as opposed to Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone, if you are British. Actually, no, I'm just going to call Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'm just going to keep things proper. Um, so, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. You, I mean, spoiler, I think all the movies are good. But the uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone... You know, I liked, it was nice, I did watch it several times, and I did enjoy it. Chamber of Secrets, the same thing. Prisoner of Azkaban, I thought was really dark. I mean, from what I hear, it's not supposed to get dark until a book later. So, but, I mean, even as a kid, I could definitely tell the transition, I guess. Then we get to Goblet of Fire, where we finally get to see what Lord Voldemort looks like. Although, the one thing I would like to know is... Why does he not have a nose? Seriously. Why is... Like, that's what... What? How do you go from looking like a normal person to having, like... And not having a nose? Now, that's ridiculous. So, there's that. Um, Order of the Phoenix, you know, I thought it was a, a nice breather with still plenty of action. So, you know, from Goblet of Fire. You know, Half-Blood Prince... You know, you get to Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and I actually really liked that one. I actually saw, for the last three movies, ladies and gentlemen, I actually went to the midnight screenings for all of the last three movies. And that was a fun time. So, yeah. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, where we all know a certain someone who was very important in Harry's life dies. But that's, uh, rather than I get into spoilers, of course. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, hmm. Oh, right. Why did I just lose my train of thought? I'm talking about Harry Potter here. Um, so, yeah. So, the midnight showing of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Had a great time. I'm like, okay, when the final movie comes out, I am most definitely, definitely, definitely... Going to see the Midnight Screening. Little did I know at the time they were going to do the final book. In the, at first it was like going to be three movies. I'm like, why would they do that? But then they kept it to two. Which, honestly, from what I hear. And based on what was in the final book. From what I heard. That was actually a smart thing to do. I mean, I liked Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 1. I did. Like, it was very clear they were building up to the final battle that was in... The second of the Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows movies. So, you know, I could tell that right away. But they did it in a way that was engaging, entertaining. And again, I grew up, we all grew up watching these characters. How could you say that any of them were, you know, any of the, any of the performances were bad? Because honestly, overall, I had a great experience watching that movie. I did. Although, spoiler alert, when, um... I saw the movie, because I actually saw the movie in Gettysburg at the Gateway Theater. And all college students were there, including myself. I actually went with a friend, who actually, her birthday was a few days ago. So, I mean, I wished her a happy birthday a few days ago, but happy birthday. Anyway, um, so, 
after Dobby dies, someone in the audience yelled, No! And everyone, like, reacted in laughter, which, I mean, let's be honest, everyone who was there had read the book, and they knew it was going to happen anyway, but it was still, you know, sad. And then, we get to it. The big one. The doozy. The end-all, be-all story that was either going to make or break this movie franchise as a whole. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. And full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two, is by far the best of all the movies. They actually did what a lot of people would have thought was impossible. They made the final movie the best movie. And I wholly agree with that. Because it satisfied everything. You know, of all the... You know what? If you want proof, look on Rotten Tomatoes. Of all the Harry Potter movies, Harry Potter and Deadly Alice Part 2 has the highest scores of all of them. With a 96, I believe. Which is pretty darn good, if you ask me. You know, it was a movie that was so good that... You know what? I'm just going to leave a link in the description of a certain someone I watch on YouTube that can hold, that can totally do a review of this particular movie justice. And you know what? I think I'll put link. I think I'll put a link to all of the Harry Potter movies that this guy talked about. Trust me, you guys are going to be in for a treat. So, yeah, there is that. So I can't really say much as in terms of spoilers, but I can tell you this. Since 2009, I have seen the highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes of that particular summer. You know, 2009 I saw Up, 2010 I saw Toy Story 3, and therefore in 2011 I saw Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. And I'm just going to say this right now. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. And actually, I may have already said this in a previous video. But Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was my favorite movie of 2011. For lots of reasons. Partly because my brother forced our entire family to go see Transformers 3. Which... Really grossed a lot of money, which beat out movies like Two Towers and Finding Nemo. But that same summer, it would later be dethroned by, of course, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Aw, yeah. So, yes. Overall, I love the Harry Potter series movies, but I'll put a link in the description of a guy who can really do these justice. I really can. So... Yeah, well, uh, I'll definitely, again, I'm going to put a link in the description below, but I guess I can't wave a magic wand, I can't produce a magic spell, but all I can do is say like, favorite, share, and hit that subscribe button, I could really use the support on YouTube, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and therefore I am very humbled that I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today, I am hopefully off a wonderful Saturday, and remember, if any of you guys ever want to talk or chat, I'll always be here to lend an ear, and I'm always going to have your back. So take care, everybody, and have a happy Saturday.